Now, I must admit, when Dell asked me if I wanted to check out this Latitude 14, 9420, 2021 model, and it's the regular laptop as well, it's not the two-in-one, uh, I must admit, my interest levels were about as high as someone at a dinner party shortly after asking me what I do for a living. It's a lie, I don't go to dinner parties. It's a, it's a business laptop, it's... You know, but then I was reliably informed by a credible source that if you're kind of an old person that like is really likes, you know, bopping on the keys, this is going to be pretty great. Yes. Yes, that's me. I'm I'm old. I like bopping on the keys. According to my analytics, a lot of the people who watch my videos are old. They must like bopping on the keys as well. That's how work gets done, isn't it? According to reliable sources, we just bop on keys until things happen. Stuff gets designed on business laptops. <sighs> anyway, before getting the latitude from Dell, honestly, I, I didn't know why this needed to exist. Uh, it's It sits in a range alongside eight or so other brands, uh, you know, many with exactly the same form factors and specs as this. You know, you've got the XPS, which has a two-in-one. You've got the, and similar specs. You've got Vostro, you've got Precision, which has a thin and light. Many have exactly the same specs inside, varying different prices. So you can understand how prospective buyers often look as confused as the average Love Island contestant. But before we jump into this, if you want to stay up to date on Tech for the Office, then do get subscribed to Tech 3D. Ding the bell while you're at it but only like if you like. Hey, before that, this is a free plug for my younger brother who started his own reseller. Autodesk reseller over in Australia, mate. Uh, if you're interested in some Autodesk Vault services, implementation, inventor training, whether you're in Australia or global, mate, he does the full shebang. So hit him up, links in the description for his website, crosstechgroup.com.au. You can see the list of companies there that he's partnered with, Dell, HP, Kaspersky, Microsoft, absolutely killing it. There you go, there's his website, links in the description. Free, mate, we're gonna start with the price and the specs of the Latitude 9420. Okay, yeah. Uh, the configuration that Dell sent me, this one here, comes in at a bum twitching 1900 quid. And that's with Dell's fantasy bollocks discount, by the way, which they just seem to apply to every laptop on the website ever, perpetually. But without that discount that you're so bestowed and blessed to have received, they reckon that this was originally intended to be three and a half grand with VAT. If this was, if this Somebody decided that this was worth three and a half grand. I'm Edmund Black at it. And that person should be dismissed immediately and just escorted off to a different industry because this is not, in this world or the next, a three and a half grand computer. I don't know where the hell they thought they got that from. Anyway, the problem with this is it's, you're going to see it's an outstanding laptop. It really is. It's special. But you can find the exact same specs in Dell's own other lines. You have the Vostro, the XPS, the even the Precision has similar form factors and thin and light. And many of those are half the price. So it's a tough one to justify this at two grand. Uh, the specs anyway of this one, it's got the i7 1185G7 power saving uh, CPU from Intel 11th gen Tiger Lake generation CPU. It's 4.8 gigahertz boost on a single core, uh, with four cores and eight threads. The RAM in here, the Latitude Lines is one of the only thin and lights within the Dell range that you can actually put 32 gigs in. The rest of them, and even the XPS 13s, you can only put 16 gigs of RAM in. So that RAM, it's sold on the board, runs at 42, 66 megahertz. But that's, again, if you need the RAM, if you need something that can handle up to 32 gigs of RAM, then this is going to be the laptop for you if you need small and light 32 gigs of RAM. Storage. This has various different configurations up to a terabyte, but this one's got the 512 gig N NVMe M.2 solid state drive. Various different display configurations, touch versus non-touch, quad HD or full HD. The one I've ended up with is the 16 by 10 non-touch full HD display. And don't forget, this is the regular laptop, not the two-in-one. Exterior design and build quality on the Latitude 9420. Now, I would say after spending quite a considerable time with this and also having been the owner of an XPS, 13 for probably about three or four years at this point. The Latitude very much does feel like a system model to the XPS. And I would argue that this feels like what the Dell engineers would have wanted to do to the XPS had they not been mandated to keep the XPS as thin as absolutely technically possible. Because this, in terms of its construction and its build quality, is on par with the XPS. 
It's CNC aluminium chassis. It's got the diamond cut edging around the side, just very much like the XPS. It's just a big slab of metal, mate. It's an absolute weapon. It's it's solid. It feels premium, just like the XPS does. And as much as it's a big slab of metal, there's certain parts of the laptop that feel a little bit different. I've got a contrasting touch to them. For example, the bottom. That's, it feels like rubbery, but it isn't. It's a soft coated paint or soft touch paint over a magnesium alloy and it feels really nice. It's, it's almost a fabric-y kind of soft touch to it. Really like that. And the only other areas within the Latitude that are metal, obviously you've got your keyboard, uh, your screen, but around the screen, what I'm not a fan of is the plastic bezel around the display. Now, I'm assuming you only get this on the non-touch display, but this weird dashboard plastic kind of effect around that display. It's not that I hate bezels or anything. It just it doesn't flow with the aesthetic of the Latitude. It looks out of place. It looks cheap. It's not going to affect rigidity or strength because the rear of the, the lid is just a big slab of metal again. Uh, but for the size and the weight of this thing, speaking of slabs of metal, it's, it's not the lightest laptop on the market. I've seen that comment from quite a few people, but considering that this is 2.8 pounds, the, the XPS 13 Touch, this is a 14 inch, and this is the same weight, it's 2.8 pounds. So it's not terrible, but it's not the lightest, given that it is a big block of metal. Uh, and at its thickest at the rear, so it's tapered, uh, and it's its thickest point at the end, it comes in at 13.91 millimeters or 0.54 inches at the rear. It's not too bad, right? You can chuck this in your bag, you can walk around a conference with this in your bag all day, and at the end, you're not gonna be whinging about a bad back. Uh, as for the keyboard though, the keyboard, well, I, I would tell you more about it, but to be honest, I've been too busy being old and bopping away on the keys to really pay much attention to what it actually is. Really likes, you know, bopping on the keys. <laughs> what? Uh, it's actually fine. Uh, the keys are tactile enough, right? They're, they're, they're a non-event. They're safe. Dell aren't going to put the maglev keys from the XPS into the Latitude. That would be too risque, and they're not to everyone's liking. So, yeah, they're not a focal point on what otherwise is a pretty decent laptop, so they're safe. Uh, the only thing I would really say is if anyone was thinking about buying a Dell Thin and Light, just is take a look at the up and down arrows, uh, because that takes some getting used to if you tend to use those on a regular basis. But apart from that, yeah, it's a, it's a good, nice and tactile, non-event, does the job, gets a pass. If you're kind of an old person. What doesn't get a pass though, is that webcam, mate, it's terrible. Well, this is a test of the 720p 30 frames per second webcam wedged into the little bezel. It's not great. This looks like, you know when people do those tests where they upload videos to YouTube or Twitch and they download them and re-upload them and download them a thousand times? This looks like the, the end result of that. It ain't great. Uh, I'm filming this at night, although I am quite well lit. Uh, the ceiling is covered in many spotlights, but what can you do? The audio, the microphone, it's probably one of the better microphones I've seen in a lot or heard in a laptop. It's still not amazing given all of the optimizations and Dell Optimizer this and 3D audio that, I was expecting a better microphone, if I'm honest. I was expecting better audio capture from this, but you can hear it for yourself. It is what it is. Now, I know, I know it's difficult wedging a webcam into a bezel, but you know what? It's not my problem. It really isn't. Work on technology to make webcams thinner and smaller. That level of video quality is just not okay. It's a regression. We've had better video quality than that in the past, especially on a business laptop as well. But there's certain features on this laptop that sort of fit in with the webcam. So for example, Dell on the Latitude lines have their safe shutter feature, which you don't get on the XPS or many other things. And the safe shutter is an automatic privacy shutter on the webcam. It's an electromechanical shutter that detects when a camera application has been opened and closed and it'll automatically flick this little plastic tab over the webcam. It's weird. It's not creepy at all, uh, but it seems to work quite well and quite reliably. The microphone is, I've heard it through the webcam footage. It's not the best. It's fine. It gets a pass. It's better than a lot of other laptops, but yeah, sure. Uh, as for the trackpad, well, I'm not a trackpad aficionado, but it does the job. It doesn't suffer from that awful kind of tappy, loose, clicky feeling that some of the XPS is used to, which apparently Dell might have fixed. So it's it's fine. It seems to get the job done. Uh, but one issue that I have found that is dry, honestly, it's 
biblically annoying is when you click dragging on the trackpad when you reach the edge limits of the trackpad it seems to just stop and i find that extraordinarily annoying it doesn't do that in the xps that's something that it's that's a thing for me yeah the speakers the speakers on this are absolutely outstanding. Now, that was something that really took me by surprise. Now, it's got four speakers, two up firing and two down firing. And with, it's got, what could they call a smart amplifier in this as well? I don't know what the hell that is. And it's got Waves Max Audio Pro software built into it as well. But the audio is really something special. <laughs> Out of the rain. These are the best. You ever heard us? Far better than the XPS, which sounds like someone slapping a wet cabbage with a plastic ruler. This has got a punchy bass. It's got nice crispy highs and mids. It, listening to music, listening to Netflix, even listening to meetings, people's voices. Awesome volume, awesome just clarity and range on the audio. So media consumption and just generally doing work that requires audio, awesome speakers. Uh, for the ports on the on the latitude, now the ports, <laughs> that's where the XPS users begin to get a bit jealous. On the right-hand side, you've got a full-size single Type-A USB 3.2 Gen 1 uh, with power share on the left hand, and the rest of it's filled up with uh, an exhaust vent. On the left-hand side, you've got full-size HDMI 2.0, two Thunderbolt 4 ports with power delivery, so you can charge the laptop, and you do charge the laptop through those. Micro SD card slot, universal audio jack, and if you spec'd in the Qualcomm X20 LTE modem in the options page, then you'll have the U SIM card slot on that side as well for mobile broadband, uh, 5G and 4G. Uh, for the display itself, right, the displays, I've only got one ref I've only got one reference here, which is the Full HD non-touch display, but it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's an excellent display. It goes up to 500 nits peak brightness. I've put this side by side with the XPS and it's just as good as the XPS display. It's pretty special. And also the anti-glare coating on the Latitude is excellent. Now I've got a window right behind the camera and look at how well that disperses the reflections of a blinding window right behind. So it's not anti-reflection, but in terms of anti-glare, that is amazing. It's in fact, you know what, I'll do the, the XPS as a comparison. This doesn't have any glare on it. <laughs> That's there's a comparison. That's what a non-anti-glare would look like. So yeah, the anti-glare coating was something that I noticed immediately having used an XPS for so long. So that was excellent. The colors, uh, I've spider checked and calibrated the screen and confirmed it does cover 100% of the sRGB space. It's an awesome screen. I would not be unhappy or displeased to have that in my laptop. Uh, for battery life, the battery in this is epic. It is, it's spectacular. Uh, there's been times where Windows little estimators went, oh, you've got 18 hours of battery life yet <laughs> left. <laughs> wow. So I've been using this all day, every day, and ended the day just, you know, with still 30 to 40 percent. I've not been putting through heavy usage, right? I've not been working on 3D card all day, but you'll easily get a full day of charge out of this doing pretty heavy work. Regular sort of consumption, home office, web browsing, spreadsheet stuff, emails, that kind of stuff, easily easily 15 plus hours battery life out of this. The battery is absolutely phenomenal. Now, as for the performance in terms of CPU, frequencies, temperature, power, all that kind of stuff. Look, to be honest, the majority of people who would buy a laptop like this just don't care, right? They don't know what an i7 is. I'm generalizing here. You probably do, but because you're watching a video like this, this runs hot. It does. Uh, running in mark throughout the duration of the test, the i7 was easily in the, in the mid to high 90s throughout the duration of Invermock. But having said that, it managed the external surface temperatures really, really well. Now in terms of power draw across the duration, I've got the graphs here. Uh, it pulls on average uh, up to sort of 40 watts CPU package power and then sort of averages down around 20 watts. And single core 4.8 boost, saw that on a regular basis. And then when it got to the ray tracing test, all core boost 2.7 gigahertz sustained across that test. Now as for noise, you'd expect Dell by this point to be able to design a laptop that's quiet and it's not going to get on the nerves of business users. And they've done that. It's fine. Yeah. Look, it full chat across the Invermark test. Didn't hear a peep from it. It's whisper quiet. The fans are there. If you slam your ear to it, you'll be able to hear them. But there's no annoying whining. There's no weird sort of disconcerting noises coming from it, like ticking or grating noises or coil whine or anything like that. So yeah, even at full tilt, going at 100%, 
they've done a good job of keeping this quiet, which is what you want when you're a business user and you're on calls, meetings, that kind of stuff. And speaking before about heat, the surface temperatures of this, so even though it gets to between the 90s and up to 100 degrees inside in the CPU, uh, they do a great job of exhausting that heat out of the side. Now, this it just doesn't get sustainably hot enough to push out enough heat to sort of burn your hand or anything like that. There's not that much heat coming out of it. But also they've done a really good job of keeping that heat away from the external surface. So running a temperature gun along the top, no higher than 40 degrees at any point. Uh, I haven't opened this up, so I, I'm not that sure where the CPU is, but I'm assuming it's sort of roughly around sort of the top area here. But it's well away from where your wrists would be resting, so that's fine. Also along the bottom, cool, no higher than 40 degrees. Uh, on the bottom, which is, again, acceptable. And for Invmark. So Invmark is my suite of Autodesk Inventor benchmark tests that I designed from scratch, which tests finite element analysis, graphics tests, ray tracing, large assembly builds, and a ton more. And this laptop was absolutely spectacular at Invmark for Autodesk Inventor. And I'm, I mean it, not spectacular for a thin and light, I mean this scored 42616 on Invermark at its best. That is considerably better than the best workstation that money could buy from 2018. That workstation had six core Xeon E 2176G inside it. That was an HP Z2 G4 workstation. This absolutely smashed that out of the water. On the leaderboard, this latitude's higher than mobile Xeons from the 10th generation. It's higher than many desktop 10th gen Intel CPUs. It's incredible how much power you get out of this on a single thread then that's exactly what autodesk applications need so for for autodesk this thing's incredible word of warning though don't buy this as your main workstation i'm not suggesting that this is more of a, a secondary laptop or a you know a secondary computer that you carry around when you need a bit of power when you're out and about it doesn't have dedicated graphics so it's not that kind of a workstation but when you're out and about and you need something to just pull out your bag and get something done this is outstanding and it also scored 85 seconds uh, on the Revit RFO modeling test as well, which looking at the rest of the results, it's higher than almost everything that's came before it. All right, the Latitude does have some unique features bundled in with it, which Dell, I assume, are trying to use to justify the price of the Latitude and add value to it. And that mostly comes via the Dell Optimizer, which is pre-installed on the Latitude, the Precision and the Optiplex lines. So the Dell Optimizer, is a suite of various different applications which are supposed to enhance your experience and make your life a little bit easier. And that contains on the latitude various things like 3D audio, noise cancellation through the microphone, uh, proximity sensors for the webcam, so it'll lock the laptop as you're walking away, and they all, they're all labelled with various marketing terms. Uh, the one that particularly caught my eye, though, was the application optimizer. And the way this works is you specify your application of choice. You run it over the course of 24 hours, and the optimizer will optimize your application based on your usage habits. And then after it's been optimized, it will then allegedly enhance the performance of that application using machine learning and AI. Now to me, I'm not gonna lie, that sounded like an absolute load of hee-haw. <laughs> what, how, what? This is, it's, this is usually just bloatware. How is it? Until I realized that the engine behind this is Intel Adaptix and then uh, I looked into what that was, and that's a toolkit for OEMs containing five different modules for machine learning and AI, uh, such as Intel DeepLink, Intel Dynamic Tuning. And these are a bunch of toolkits that, for example, allow Dell and other OEMs to adapt power policies uh, based on predicted workloads, not reactive workloads. What this will do is it'll look at your usage habits and predict what it thinks it's coming in the future or increase the fans. It'll reduce the power draw to try and increase your performance for what's about to come. That to me sounds quite impressive. Some clever shenanigans going on there. But does it work? Does it actually make a difference? Because that's in this and I can test it. And I don't mean through Grand Theft Auto or Doom either. No, I've got the perfect tool. I've got Invmark, mate. So I ran Invmark and optimized the latitude using Invmark. Then I ran Invmark several times with the Adaptix slash optimizer on and off. Looked at the scores that it spat out at the end. And mate, the Dell Optimizer with Intel Adaptix was actually doing nothing. <laughs> did absolutely nothing. So I ran it with the Optimizer off and I got a pretty decent score, right? And then I turned the Optimizer on, so it should should be better. I ran Invmark. The score dropped. <laughs> That's not right. That shouldn't happen. 
So I thought, okay, well, maybe it's running a second time. Maybe the laptop's heated up. Maybe it's thermal throttling. That, that, that shouldn't happen. That's against the whole point of what this is supposed to be doing. So I ran it again with the optimizer turned off. The score went back up again on the third run. So out of the three runs, the middle one was the lowest score. The third one was higher than the second. It, it didn't fit. It, it wasn't consistent. I didn't see any meaningful results whatsoever from it. But more to the point, Invmark logs all your hardware sensors as the tests are running. Things like core frequencies, core load, uh, power draw. And I looked at all of those stats from the optimized and the non-optimized runs, and I can't see any noticeable or any meaningful, tangible difference in how the PC was performing and behaving over the duration of the test. It was running at the same frequencies, same core load, same temperatures with optimized on and optimized off. And let's be honest, mate, this is as predictive of as a workload as you can get. It's a benchmark test. And that's what I used to optimize it. So yeah, I don't know. Look, if I'm doing this wrong, maybe. I've got contacts at Intel now who I'm asking about this. Uh, but if I'm looking at the wrong things to investigate, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at. <laughs> I don't know. But the other features that come with Optimizer, honestly, uh, they seem a little bit pointless and a little bit fluff, right? For example, this, they've got their Express sign-in that comes with the Optimizer. That's this thing where you walk towards your laptop and it uses the infrared sensor on the laptop. Oh, there's a human there and it turns the screen on. I, I just don't need that level of convenience. I don't, right? Sure, put it in. But it doesn't need a label and it doesn't need to justify a laptop of this cost, right? You know, if, if that was to come for free in a budget laptop, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, fine. Right? It's, it's nothing special. It's infrared sensors. Uh, and then you've got the likes of the Express Connect for Wi-Fi switching. So as you walk in between, for example, rooms in your house, if you've got a mesh network, it'll automatically switch between the best mesh nodes. Uh, or if you're out and about in a hotel and you different Wi-Fi hotspots, it'll jump and find the most appropriate Wi-Fi hotspot. But you see, my XPS already does that just fine, as does my Samsung Note 20 Ultra. Seems to just connect automatically to the most appropriate hotspot. And they don't need a label on whatever does that to do that. So it just seems like putting labels on things to, to just justify stuff that you, you just don't need a label for. I don't know, I, I'm a cynic. But either way, this laptop doesn't need that. It's spectacular in its own right when it comes to performance. And I've shown that through Invermark. This thing is amazing. So what I'm going to do is wrap this up with three pros and three cons as my conclusion. So uh, if you're still on the fence about whether or not this is something that you want, uh, maybe this is going to help. So what I'll say, pro number one, an ultra portable like this has more power in it for single threaded applications, specifically Autodesk applications, than the best desktop tower workstations did from three years ago, with many of those desktop towers still probably being used in production today. And you can get more power from one of these. That's incredible. That's something special. The performance out of this is blistering. Uh, pro number two, the battery life is epic. It really is. Uh, depending on what you're doing, of course, it will vary, but generally it's up there with the best of the best when it comes to battery life. And pro number three, good option for someone who wanted the build quality and the premium feel of the XPS, but because they're using it for business, they couldn't get away with the minimalist ports. Uh, so yeah, got the ports, got the connectivity, but you also get that build quality and premium feel of the XPS. As for the Connie Con Cons, difficult to justify the price uh, if you're buying this for yourself. It really is. If you're getting given this from work, I'd be buzzing, absolutely buzzing. Don't worry about the price, just get worked by it. But if you're buying this for yourself as a solo contractor, for example, if this is a business expense. If you're an old person. It's it's tough. It's going to be tough to justify 1,900 quid for this spec when if you just try to accept a slightly lower build quality, you can have the same kind of specs and very similar performance from the likes of a Vostro or an Inspiron. Con number two, Dell's optimizer, which they use to justify that price, it just doesn't bring enough to the table, in my opinion, to add enough value to this line anyway, to support that premium price. Now, whether that optimizer and its features work better on other lines, like the Precision, I don't know. That's something I can check out later on. That software, which is heavily used in its market, and just doesn't seem to cut the mustard here. And con number three, that webcam, that needs to be better. As unfortunately, it's it's hardware. It can't be it can't be improved with software and drivers. So that's the way it is. But it's possible, it works, it's just not the best, and it should be better in 2021. So there you go, that's the Dell 14 Latitude 9420. Uh, this is going to be sent back over. I've got a few of the Dell units coming through the doors. Get subscribed for those. 
Uh, if you want a comparison between this and the XPS, just feature for feature, point to point, and get subscribed and, and let me know if that's something you want. I'll only do that if there's, if there's enough interest in that. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you thought. Thanks for watching Tech3D. Don't forget to subscribe, ding the bell, like if you like it. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.